Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. In today's video, I'm going to be going over my stats for quarter two of 2022 and talking about my favorite books that I read in the months of April, May, and June. So this is my second of yearly quarterly update that I like to do. If you missed quarter one's video, I will link it up above where you can check it out. A any excuse to do more statistics, of course I will do. It's really fun for me. And I have lots for you, including some lovely charts where you can see stuff. So I'm going to talk first about all of my reading stats for the past three months. How did my reading go in April, May, and June? And then we're going to get into my most favorite books that I read. So this is going to include my six star reads, which is what I give to favorites of the year for from the quarter, as well as a few honorable mentions, books that didn't quite make that list but came really close that I want to highlight to you. With that said, let's go ahead and dive in and talk about my stats for quarter two of 2022. Between April and June of this year, I read 93 books and an average of 327 pages per day. This is pretty typical for me. It's maybe a little bit lower than the first three months of the year, probably because June my reading was lower than previous months, but that's great. 93 books in a quarter is pretty good. I read a little bit less this quarter than the first quarter. Overall, I've read 203 books in the current year. Out of my official goal of 250, I knew that I would probably reach more than that, but on Goodreads my goal was 250. In terms of format, it shouldn't come as a huge surprise that a lot of my reading in this quarter has been audiobook. 59 of the books that I read were via audio, which is 63% of my overall reading. So that number has especially climbed, I think, because when I've been in reading slumps or dealing with anxiety. Audiobooks have been really helpful for me to continue with reading. Some of those I am partly reading along with the physical book, but primarily listening on audio. Ebooks made up the smallest piece of my reading this quarter. Only 13 of the books that I read, or 15%, were ebooks, and I read 21 physical books, which is about 23% of my reading. And again, this makes sense. Ebooks are not my preferred method of reading. I do read eARCs on Kindle, but I really prefer physical and audio, so I'm not surprised that this is a smaller amount. This quarter I only had three rereads, which is, I believe, down from the first quarter where I was doing some read-alongs and rereading some things that I'd read previously, and this quarter I had a total of seven DNFs, books that I chose not to finish for a variety of reasons, which actually is a little bit on the low side. Next, let's take a look at the age categories of books that I've been reading this quarter. Again, Again, I don't think there's any big surprises here. 84% of the books that I read this quarter were targeted at an adult audience. I feel like that is just making up a larger and larger portion of my reading, where I used to read about 50% YA. That is very far down. This quarter, only 12% of my reading was YA books, and then 3% was middle grade, and 1% was for children. In terms of when these books are being published, 45% of them were published in 2022, and the other 55% were published prior to 2022, with the oldest book that I read having been published in 1794. This is pretty typical for me. About half of my reading usually is pretty current stuff. And in fact, one stat I found interesting is that only 40.9% of the books that I read were for review, which is a little bit down from what it had been previously, typically about 50% of the books that I had read were for review, so I'm actually happy to see that drop. Ideally, if I could ever make myself get there, I would love to get to a place where closer to 30 or 35 percent of my reading overall is for review and the rest is just other things, but I'm happy to see that number dropping. 14 percent of the books that I read this quarter were debut novels. I feel like that number has also dropped. I've been reading more series. I've been continuing with more series that I've started, reading more from more established authors, which which hasn't necessarily been a bad thing. And taking a look at who is publishing most of the books that I'm reading, this is interesting, but I guess kind of tracks with what I sense. My most read publisher is Macmillan at 29%. I do read a lot from Tor and Tor.com who publish through Macmillan, so it kind of makes sense to me that Macmillan would be up there. And then 17.2% is from HarperCollins. I would say a lot of this is probably romance. HarperCollins published is Harlequin, they publish Avon, so a lot of the romance I'm reading is from them, and then 16.1% is from Penguin Random House, which is interesting because I think previously Penguin Random House was often my 
biggest publisher, my most read publisher. 10.8% of my reading is from indie authors, which is pretty good. Honestly, I'm not upset about that. That is less than it has been previously. But again, 10.8% is pretty good. Overall, coming from the big five top five publishers, 73% of my reading is coming from them. So the bulk of my reading is coming from the big five but I have like a decent amount coming from indie publishers and small presses. Next, let's take a look at the genres I've been reading. Again, like this is not surprising. I feel like if anything, I'm just leaning more into the genres that I enjoy. My most read genre in this quarter was romance at 26.9%. On the graph that you're gonna see, it will be broken up into subcategories. So contemporary, speculative and historical romance. But if I add those up, it is the biggest category at 26.9%. But fantasy is close behind at 25.8%. So basically, half Half of my reading is just fantasy and romance. And then the next two biggest categories are sci-fi and horror. Sci-fi is at 17.2% and horror is at 10.8%. Horror is making up a bigger chunk. Sci-fi is making up a bigger chunk, which I'm happy to see, but it is interesting. It's edging out some of those other categories that previously maybe I would have read more of. And this isn't for the whole year, but at least for the last three months, I've been reading a lot of genre fiction. Next up, let's take a look at author demographics. And for this quarterly look, I'm going to do a little more statistics than I do in my monthly update for those who are interested. First up, authors country of origin, 73% are from the US, 10.8% are from the UK. And then we have kind of a smattering of other countries. I'm not really shocked at this. I do read predominantly Western authors. I would like to increase the other kinds of authors I'm reading from, but th this is a lot of what I end up with. And that's something to maybe think about for goals for next year. Oh, one other thing that I forgot to include that I'll just put in here is the length of the, the books. 76.3 of the books that I'm reading are novel length and 14% are novellas. So I just thought that was kind of interesting. Again, this is just for the past three months. Taking a look at the gender of the authors, this is a lot more balanced than it's been in previous months and quarters. About 25% of my reading is male authors, about 69% is female authors, and 6.5% is non-binary or agender authors. I'm happy to see the non-binary number creeping up. I think the more I've been reading queer books, the more I've been reading from non-binary authors, so that's kind of cool. And I think because I'm doing these read-alongs this year, reading Joe Abercrombie books and Terry Goodkind books, the number of male authors that I'm reading is is higher. Typically, that number is is lower than it is right now. Um, but again, not not a bad thing. If you've seen my monthly wrap ups, you know that the benchmarks I typically set for myself are that I'm aiming to read overall an average of 50% from black, indigenous and person of color authors, and at least 25% from LGBT authors. So for this quarter, I read 47.3% from black, indigenous and person of color authors. So I came in a little bit under my goal. Again, that might get made up in the rest of the year, but something to keep an eye on. I, knocking out of the park reading queer authors for fully 49.5% of the books that I read in this quarter were from LGBTQ plus authors. So I I'm reading a lot more than even what my goals are. And that will probably continue. Taking a look at some other author demographics in the past quarter, 8.6% of the books that I read were by trans authors. 8.6% were by disabled authors, where I know that they're disabled, they talk about it publicly, and I, I have that information. And 17.2% were by neurodivergent authors. So I'm pretty happy to see the numbers on a lot of the author demographics and diversity. I think I'm doing a reasonably good job of diversifying who I'm reading from. I think my biggest issue is that I am primarily reading from Western authors, but it is hard because that is most of what I have available to me. Um, and a lot of what I have offered for review as well. Last thing I want to talk about for statistics, and then we will move on into talking about the books, is of course my star ratings. And um, I did not do the math on my average star rating for this quarter, so I will put that number up here if you're interested in seeing what it is. Here are the raw numbers of books that got the different star ratings. What I found interesting was that 60% of the books that I read got at least four stars, which means I really liked them. And only 40% got under four stars where they were either 
good or not so great. I'm always curious to see what percentage of my reading is getting six stars, which is a favorite of the year. And in the last quarter, 9% of the books that I was reading got a six star rating from me, which is pretty typical. I'm usually anywhere from like seven to 10%. So 9% is totally fine and reasonable. I now have to take a break to go do a live stream, but I will be back shortly to talk about my favorite books of the quarter and some honorable mentions. All right, let's go ahead and talk about those four honorable mentions, books that didn't quite make my list of favorite books of the year, but books that I really loved this quarter and want to highlight. I did not think to go and grab all of them, but I have one of them here. The Sorcerer of the Wild Deeps by Kaya Shante Wilson. I feel like I've been raving about this a lot lately. This is one that I really loved and I think was mismarketed. It was basically marketed as an African inspired fantasy novella, but it's really more sci fantasy. And I do think that that distinction affects the way you read it. But I love this. It has a gay love story at the center of it. I think it's so smart. I love Kaya Shante Wilson's writing and I definitely want to read the sequel. I was also a huge fan of Nine Fox Gambit by Yoon Ha Lee. This was excellent. It was one that I was nervous to read because I had heard it was really difficult and complicated. And it kind of is, but I feel like like if you have any familiarity with the sci-fi genre and you just go into it and let it be and go with the story it'll all eventually make sense and I just thought it was so smart and well written and I loved it. The next honorable mention is The Perks of Loving a Wallflower by Erica Ridley. I really really loved this romance even more than I thought I would. It is a slow burn funny historical romance. I do think that the cover while beautiful doesn't really give you a good sense of what the characters are like. This follows a heroine who is a curvy blonde bombshell and nerd and her love interest who is non-binary and super dapper and like the banter is excellent. I loved this romance. It was great. My final honorable mention is Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. <sighs> I loved this so much. It's very low stakes. It's very cozy. It was exactly what I needed in a high anxiety time period. It is a low stakes fantasy novel about a barbarian orc who decides to retire and open a coffee shop. And I loved it so very much. With that said, let's talk about the eight books that got a six star rating from me in quarter two. And like I did in the quarter one video, I did decide to force rank these from lowest to highest really love all of these and some of these are a little bit arbitrary but here are the eight books that are among my favorites for the year. First up is a nonfiction. This is Hashtag Church 2 How Purity Culture Upholds Abuse and How to Find Healing by Emily Joy Allison. I really loved this book. I thought it was excellently put together. I found it to be really meaningful and really moving and spoke a lot to some of my own experiences. I would definitely recommend this if you grew up at all in purity culture in evangelical America or if you're just curious to understand more about it and about some of the damage and trauma that it has caused. So highly recommend. I loved this. Next is my most recent addition to the list. This is Reprieve by James Hahn Matson. I read this for a reading vlog where I read books that I had purchased because of Kayla over at Books and Lala. To see if we can trust her reviews, I will link that video up above. And I ended up really loving this book a lot. This is another one that I think has suffered in the reviews from bad marketing. This was really pitched as a horror novel about a haunted house slash escape room, which Yes, while that is an element of this book, it is not the majority of this book. The majority of this book is very character driven, very concerned with social commentary. It is a social horror novel and I loved it. I think it's really smart. I think it's very nuanced in the way that it's tackling difficult issues such as race, misogyny, homophobia, and uh, intersectionality, among other things. I've talked at length about this book, so I'm not going to get into all the details here, but I did really love it. I think it was so good, but I do think you need to go in knowing what the book is, and I can understand why some of the reviews were not as high because it wasn't necessarily what it was pitched as. Next is an advanced copy of a book that's coming out in August. This is A Taste of Golden Iron by Alexandra Rowland. I loved this. It is a slow burn fantasy romance between a prince and his bodyguard 
and I just loved it. This was so easy to read. It was so enjoyable to read. I feel like it was genuinely swoon worthy. The way the romance developed was great. It's definitely a slow burn. I also think for a book that could be fraught with power dynamic problems, it does a pretty good job of managing the power dynamics in a healthy way definitely one worth looking for and it's got a gorgeous cover. Next up is Mad Ship by Robin Hobb. This is the second book in the Live Ship Trader series which I loved. This trilogy as a whole is one of my favorite things that I have read this year and a, a favorite trilogy for sure. This second installment was excellent. We got a lot of world building. We got a lot of character development. <sighs> like Robin Hobb knows how to break my heart but like oh my god so good so so good. Her characterization is excellent. Next is The Sword of Kaigen by M.L. Wang. This is another one that I read for one of those videos where I was reading things I bought because of other booktubers. I'll link that one up above if you want to check it out. But I originally purchased this because of Angela at Literature Science Alliance. I know this has been kind of a booktube darling over the last year or so, but her review is what finally pushed me to pick it up. And I, it, this was not what I was expecting. I loved it such great character work. It's got a kick-ass mom character. It is heartbreaking at times. There is grief. There are content warnings for it, but so, so good. I love everything about what this book was doing. I would love to read more in the world. Next is a book that is about to come out this month. This is A Prayer for the Crown Shy by Becky Chambers. I love this so much. It is a hug and a therapy session all rolled into one. It's this very cozy, feel-good sci-fi novella that is grounded on some hard science. It's set in a world where there was a climate apocalypse, but humanity has now learned how to live well with Earth, and this follows a robot and a tea monk who form a friendship, and I just, I loved it so so much. It was great. Two more to go. First is one of my favorite romances of the year. This is A Caribbean Heiress in Paris by Adriana Herrera. I am so thrilled that this book was as good as it was. It was everything I was hoping for. I am generally a fan of Adriana Herrera's romance, but this was her first historical romance novel, and I am just thrilled that we are getting more diversity in our historicals. It's really great to see that. This is set in Paris in 1889 during the World Exposition, and it follows an Afro-Dominican heiress who is traveling to the World Exposition to sell rum. She runs a rum company and while there she meets a Scottish whiskey maker and uh, you know love happens. It was wonderful. It was everything I was hoping for. It was fun and sexy and also addressed issues of the day of racism and colonization and where the money of the aristocracy came from. So good. Loved it. And finally, my favorite book that I read in the second quarter of 2022, and I would say a contender for my favorite book of the year. It's definitely high up there. Even though I know this is not everybody's thing, I adored it so much. This is Siren Queen by Nevo. <sighs> oh my gosh, like I love Nevo's writing so much. And this is my favorite book from her by far. I adored this. This is set in an alternate version of golden era Hollywood following a Chinese American young woman who wants to be on the silver screen. But this book basically draws on Bay mythology and literalizes the exploitative practices of Hollywood studios at the time, particularly towards young women, towards young women of color, and it follows our heroine who is just like so intense and such a badass and she's a lesbian so she has sapphic relationships that do get steamy at times in the book. And her in this world where she is willing to be seen as a villain to be seen as a monster to get what she wants to have her voice heard and I just thought this was gorgeous it was stunning I loved everything about it easily one of my favorite books I've read this year so there you have it those are the eight books that made my favorites list in quarter two of the year the best of the best at least in my opinion I would love to hear from you in the comments down below let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on anything I talked about in this video and for your question of the day tell me what was your favorite book that you read in the last three months so April May June what was the best book or your favorite book that you read in those three months let me know I would love to hear if you like this video it does help if you give it a thumbs up subscribe if you want to see more thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time